In this video, I'm gonna be going over a deal that my partner and I purchased over three years ago, and this consists of a duplex, a triplex, and a quadplex, and it sits on a corner lot just outside of downtown. And I previously made a video about how I am converting these to Airbnb in order to maximize my cash flow. But in this video, I'm going to focus more on the finances of this purchase. I was actually able to get this purchase funded completely by the bank, including the renovation. This was about $150,000 of renovation to begin with. And since it was smack dab in the middle of COVID, that increased um, quite a bit. So we had to pivot a little bit and change our strategy from long-term rental to Airbnb to increase the cash flow to make this investment worthwhile for my partner and I. So let's get into it. So how you be successful in real estate investing is by finding properties that you can add value to. Now this property that I'm walking through right now is a duplex that is part of a nine unit package that I purchased over three years ago. So duplex, triplex, and a quadplex. Whenever we purchased this, it was literally the worst property on the block. It had meth heads and hoarders and it was just in terrible shape. So we knew there was value to be had there. We purchased this property for $225,000. The bank gave us every bit of that and the loan renovation, which had a budget of $150,000. Now we added value there, but we ran into a little bit of a pickle. This was literally right as COVID was kicking off. And so material prices shot through the roof. We were actually unable to finish the whole project, but we had to improvise a little bit. And this property is very close to downtown. So there is a bit of a demand there. There's shows downtown, there's all kinds of events that happen downtown. So we decided to pivot over to Airbnb. That is another way that we added value. So after we were done renovating this, if we were to have left this as just a long-term rental property, it would have cash flowed, I'm sorry, it would have grossed rents of $8,100 a month. Over the course of 12 months, that would have been about $97,000 and the expenses would have been about $30,000 for the whole year. And the cap rate at a 7%, would put the value at roughly $850,000. Now that's good. It still would have cash flowed a little bit, but converting it over to Airbnb actually increases that value much more. So over the course of a year, Airbnb, all these units brings in $134,000. The expenses over the course of that year are $45,000. And if you take the cap rate at 7%, that puts the value of this property at around $1.2 million. So although that may not be a value that we could sell it at, being it's an Airbnb, banks don't typically loan on Airbnbs like that, it still gives us an idea of how much we've added in value to this property. We added about $400,000 in value to this property just by pivoting and doing short-term rentals. Now. They do take a little more work and they can be stressful. You have to be a little more available. You've got to have a good cleaner. You do have to furnish them. So there are some extra expenses when it comes to this, but you need to add value. Find properties that you can add value to. That way they can appreciate and over time, it will allow you to be successful. You're gonna be able to cash in on all that appreciation at some point down the road. We were actually not able to completely finish this project. This is considered the ninth unit um, and it is a basement unit. It's fairly large. It's about thousand square feet, but since it's in a basement, we had some trouble trying to seal it up 
um, from any kind of groundwater getting in. We did a pretty good job, but the property cash flows so well right now that we're kind of just biding our time until we can actually get in here, redo a lot of this framing, and basically start from scratch on this. It's a pretty neat property, these old 1920s terrazzo floors, and we've tried to actually refinish those in as much of the spaces that have them as possible. And it actually has a garage as well. which is pretty neat for the property. I think that could add some value to a long-term rental. Having a garage over here is kind of not normal because these are old homes and old homes don't typically have very large garages, if any garage at all. Uh, we've done a lot of framing upgrades to the property, put a lot of new support beams in and tried to just beef it up as much as possible. And again, this was right in the middle of COVID. So all this wood structure had to be replaced, which increased our cost on this tremendously since the cost during COVID on wood basically at least doubled. This is the back of the property where all the buildings adjoin. And that is the duplex to the right there and the triplex to the left. And the quadplex is behind me. So we had to do a lot of work that involved wood, it seemed like, you know, one of the worst things that could have happened during COVID. All this siding is old novelty siding. A lot of it needed to be replaced. We've put a new deck in, as you can tell, a new overhang in there to keep the water out from the basement units. But all in all, it's been really, really good converting these over to Airbnb. So let's see how the numbers break down on this and go over how the bank actually was able to lend us the money for the purchase and the renovation. So for the last part of this video here, I'm actually going to break down the numbers, how they started, and how we are where we're at, and actually go over why the bank was able to lend us the full purchase price and the full renovation on this property. So let's take a look. So originally, this property was purchased for $225,000. And at the time, based on what the previous landlord had provided us, the rents were supposedly supposed to be about $5,500 a month, which comes out to $66,000 a year. And in my area, it's about a 5% for the vacancy, especially in and around the downtown area. Now, that's not really accurate for this property, but just for the sake of this video, we're going to leave it at 5%. So our total operating expenses on the property at the time, we calculated to be about 20 $200 a month or something along the lines of that, but we're just going to call it $25,000 a year. And that's going to put our net income at the time of purchase at $37,000. And this says that it's actually a 17 cap based on the numbers and worth about $538,000, which is completely bullcrap because the property was in great distress. Um, we're paying for the condition it was in, not for the numbers in this case it was basically falling apart. So these numbers are a little bit misleading. And actually what we did is we went to the bank and we said, hey, we want to get a loan to fix up this property. And what the bank does is they give you a after repair value appraisal. So they're gonna get an appraisal and it'll tell you what the value is at the time and then also an after renovations value. So the appraiser came out and based on the numbers we gave him and based on our budget because you have to draw up a budget for the appraiser to actually you know give him an idea of what kind of fixtures you know how nice it's going to be based on those things he came back with a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar arv on this property which we thought was extremely low at the time but we thought we could actually get the renovation done for the amount the bank was going to lend us so based on that four hundred and fifty thousand dollar appraisal the bank was going to lend us 85% of $450,000. 85% of $450,000 is about $382,000. Now, you can take the purchase price off of that, which is $225,000, and that leaves us with $157,000. So our purchase price and our renovation fell within 
the 85% loan to value that the bank was willing to lend on this property. Now, most banks, especially nowadays, would not just give us all that money and not have us put any skin in the game. But I did have a relationship with the bank. I had done these types of projects with them before, and they trusted that I would complete the project and you know it would uh, put their money to good use. So they lent us that money. We actually only brought $3,000 total to closing. My partner brought $1,500. I brought $1,500 and that was it. Now, it was a real pain in the butt actually dealing with the renovation the whole time, but we got all the money for the renovations and the purchase of the property. And anything we make on this property from here on out is essentially, it, it, it's, it's infinite income, right? But actually what ended up happening is this renovation was smack dab in the middle of COVID. And I think I've mentioned that a couple times throughout this video, but we ended up running out of money. And so at some point we had to pull back the reins and go on hiatus because we ran out of money and just couldn't finish the actual renovation on all the units. I think we had maybe four and a half, five of the units completed. But my partner suggested that we go back to the bank and ask them for a reappraisal. Uh, at the time, values had increased. If you remember, the value of property increased after COVID, rents went up after COVID. And so we went back to the bank. We said, hey, can we get another after repair value loan on this property? They did it. And the after repair value at that time, the appraisal came back at $770,000. So they gave us another hundred and I think it was $80,000 to complete the renovation. And we still didn't bring any money to the table. They reappraised it based on the value of the property it and the appraisal. It fit within their 85% loan to value and they lent us that money. They were a little more strict on the uh, documentation as far as what we were doing to the property, but all in all, it went just as smooth. And we still didn't complete the renovation. We were left with one single unit that we didn't finish. And my partner and I calculate that to be about $25,000, $30,000 to complete. And I think I did a little quick tour of that in the video, but the property is already cash flowing $130,000 a year with them leased or with them listed on Airbnb. And these are the numbers with it currently being listed as an Airbnb. This is the $770,000, of course, that they appraised it at. And we are doing $134,000 a year gross with Airbnb. I put 7% in here, and to be honest with you, there really is no vacancy with Airbnb. These are actual numbers that I'm using, and that puts the gross operating income at $134,000, and our expenses for Airbnb every single year are $45,000 that is including all the extra utilities that you have to pay and all of the supplies that you have to purchase for Airbnb, all the platform fees that you have to pay for. Um, and that puts our net operating income at $89,000, a 12 cap, and the value at $1,271,000. Now, although that value is not a value that we could sell the property for because I don't believe banks lend on Airbnb income, it is still giving us a idea of how much value we've added to the property. And it's quite significant going from long-term rentals to Airbnb. Not without the headache, but it's still worth it in the end because we're able to cash flow much more. Now, hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you got any questions about these numbers, please uh, drop in the comments down below and hopefully it made sense to you. And as always, if you did like the video, please smash the like button and subscribe. I appreciate it. Till next time.